pretty much everyone in London is like, you know, a bloody John Wick waiting to happen. Everyone in the city is Batman level capable, you know, and you can buy their unswerving loyalty for the price of hacking a server in a bin. Get Hello and welcome to a new video series we're doing here on Rock Paper Shotgun called My Favourite Thing In. It's self-explanatory, really. I, Colm O'Hearn, will chat to one of the lovely RPS staffers about a spang new video game they've been playing and get them to tell me about their favourite thing in it. In some cases, they'll have to think long and hard about their choice because the game they've been playing mightn't be that great, while other, better games will have multiple things for them to pick. Section editor Nate Crowley has been playing Ubisoft's open-world hack-em-up, Watch Dogs Legion, so I've asked him to chat to me about the one aspect of the game he enjoys more than anything else. So Nate, what is your favourite thing? in Watch Dogs Legion. Oh, I suppose it's the, just the weirdness that unfolds uh, from the much vaunted recruit anyone mechanic. So, in all the marketing and everything prior to launch, they have said that you can recruit anyone to your dead sec team. You can indeed, yeah. Uh, some people are harder than others, like... You know, if they are working for Albion, which is the big naughty security firm that's doing the fascism, probably quite difficult. But yeah, in theory, anyone. And I'll, I'll, I'll preface all of this by saying my favourite thing is the weirdness that unfolds from it rather than necessarily the intended function of the system. Okay. So with, with, with that caveat in place, the idea is... At uh, the start of the game, you choose from a selection of characters, and they're, like, the first active dead set person. And then as the game opens up, you can begin to recruit other people, and you do... Basically, you do a side quest for them. Right. And in return, they agree to join your operation. All of these people you can switch to at any point. If you fancy doing a mission... As one of the people you've gathered into your roster, you can do that. And they've all got their own abilities and sort of assets, which can be the weapons or vehicles or things. How repetitive are the characters you come across that you can recruit? Well, uh, to give it credit, I've either not seen dialogue or the, the side quests for recruitment get repeated, or it has been repeated in different voices and I didn't notice or it has been repeated, but there's been enough stuff in between that I didn't notice. So basically, I haven't got to that stage, which I imagine I will get to at some point of, oh, no, not not this guy again, but this time he's wearing a gold puffer jacket. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the, the procedural generation is quite weird sometimes because it's sort of mad libs um, in terms of who these people are. It's like a 57-year-old talent agent who goes to furry conventions and has a pet owl and is a member of the Liberal Democrats and doesn't believe in vaccination. It's it's weird. And everything, all of their beliefs, you'll notice, are all taken from the zeitgeist. You know, no one just likes, I don't know, gardening. It's all got to be like esports or crypto everyone seems terminally online mm. and i look i know it's a cyberpunk setting i know the the further we career into the future the more everyone's going to be forced to think about computers all the time but it does seem as if no one has any other enthusiasms in this world uh, other, other than for computers and the activities directly facilitated by them but at the same time is it that madness that you enjoy yeah that's that's where the love comes in it's the way the whole thing unfolds i can imagine the potential for realism in a system like this is quite impressive 
But everything has to be abstracted a bit if it's going to be simulated in a video game. And <laughs> the abstractions and the little corner cuts make some weird situations. So I had a brilliant one where Diane, who was my starting lady, was zooming through the city at terrifying speeds on a motorbike, uh, hit a bollard, went sailing through the air, smashed into someone head first. They both got up and then Diane just accosted them and said, you look like the kind of person who wants to take their city back. <laughs> if that happened to you, you'd either be in hospital or you'd run a mile. But instead, this woman was like, oh, yeah, stone the crows, governor. Well, I don't like to talk about it, but my, my cousins got into drug smuggling for this gang. And maybe if you could help her out, I'll join your secret paramilitary. And that's an unusual conversation, isn't it? It is, yeah, yeah. It doesn't happen every day. I can't imagine. But at the same time, you didn't find these conversations and these situations jarring. You you enjoyed the, the kind of weirdness of them. Oh, yeah. They're absolutely nothing like reality. Um, and it's it makes it completely impossible to believe in as this sort of struggling underground resistance. Because it, you really can just n knock out a quick side quest and have everyone on your side. And it's... Yeah, everyone's got different skills and things, but everyone's a beast. Like, pretty much everyone in London is like, you know, a bloody John Wick waiting to happen. And you end up feeling sorry for Albion in the end, because there's only so many of them. And uh, yeah, I know the message is that, you know, there's strength in numbers, and if we all banded together, we could overthrow the man. But, you know, it, it, it does help if everyone in the city is Batman-level capable. Mm -hmm. You know, and you can buy their unswerving loyalty for the price of, I don't know, hacking a server in a bin in Westminster. Yeah, it's odd. It's really odd. Like you mentioned their skills. Are they equally as odd? They certainly allow for a lot of unusual fun. Like I say, the ability to switch between these people mid-mission is, is lovely. Because you can do things however you fancy. I, um, Diane... I sent her up through the ranks of an underground bare-knuckle fighting ring, and I fought this geezer who had sort of a gold hat and a crowbar, and I thought he was a bit of a lord. So after the fight, I tracked him down in the street. I was like, do you want to be on the team? And I had to go and oh, find... There was someone trying to frame him for a car bombing, so I had to do in that person and then defuse the car bomb and, and then he was on side but he's just a fight lord so if i fancy doing a mission fists first mm -hmm. i get him in and i've got this contract killer with an ak if i just want to let it all out with a bit of the old gunishment uh and i've got a, a sneaky lass with a spider robot and stuff so yeah you can do this at any point but it also offers unparalleled opportunities for dicking around. Uh, well, I know you're especially fond of the drone. Yeah, there's a construction drone, which is a big, big boy <laughs> that lifts up crates and that. But what you can also do, and the guy I've, I've got, it's like his pet. He's this sort of nihilistic Irish construction worker who seems a really pleasant man until you realise just how fond he is of ending people's lives with a giant wrench. Because that's the thing, everyone in London is just delighted to commit the most horrifying murder uh, without a second's thought. He's got this drone, and what I love to do is climb up on it, and he sits there like a little goblin with his phone controlling it, and I just either fly around at street level, just spraining people by flying into them, or... Sometimes he goes on little cruises over the Thames, uh, forcing boats to ram each other by hacking them. I lost an hour to that. <laughs> and I, I don't know how much staying power it will have, but that's good old, you know, GTA, Saints Row style, open world city nonsense. And I do think it would all work so much better if the game went a bit more Saints Row and didn't try to have such a serious tone. Because the dicking around is superb.
Well, thanks very much for chatting with me today, Nate. And if you, dear viewer, would like to check out Nate's full thoughts on Watch Dogs Legion, be sure to have a read of his written review of the game on rockpapershotgun.com. Um, thanks very much for watching, you absolute star. We hope to see you again soon as we learn more about people's favourite things in video games.